The MCU is one of the biggest film franchises in the world, and as such, a ton of actors have auditioned, made the cut, tried on wardrobe, been offered roles, and a select few were obviously cast. But what about the ones that weren't? I'm Adam Andrews with Where Are They Now, and this is the top 10 celebrities who almost landed Marvel roles. Number 10, John Krasinski. Most fans of the MCU know this one. But John Krasinski, famous for his role as Jim on The Office, was one of the actors who actually made it pretty far in the audition process to play Captain America. In a bit of a famous BuzzFeed video, John joked about how he went in for a wardrobe fitting to wear the Captain America uniform. And then he saw Chris Evans walk by completely ripped and wearing his Thor costume, and Krasinski immediately lost all confidence. Honestly, I'm kind of glad we still got to see him as Reed Richards though. Number 9, Tom Cruise. This is another well known almost casting. When the casting for Iron Man first started, Robert Downey Jr. was still a bit fresh off having a rather rocky past, and so producers were pretty hesitant to hire the actor. Lots of other actors were offered the role, including Mission Impossible star Tom Cruise. Thank God Tom Cruise turned it down. I'm sure he would be okay, but Robert Downey Jr. was the perfect choice for that role, and it's easy to argue that if he wasn't cast, the MCU would not have turned out like it did. It would be cool to see Tom Cruise as like an alternate universe Iron Man though. Just saying. Number 8, Timothy Chalamet. Could you imagine anyone else playing Spider-Man other than Tom Holland? And other than Tobey Maguire, and other than Andrew Garfield. Oh, okay, so maybe you can imagine it, but none other than the hotshot actor Timothy Chalamet actually auditioned for the role back in 2015, and according to him, he completely blew it. I don't know how exactly he did that, but it's what he says, so. The current cast has talked about him playing Harry Osborn, though, and honestly, yes, like a hundred times, yes. Number seven, Daniel Craig. According to Screen Rant, James Bond himself, Daniel Craig, was actually approached by Marvel for the role of Thor. As soon as I read this, I had to kind of like sit there for like 10 minutes trying to imagine Daniel Craig with like long hair and the Thor costume on. I don't know, I kind of want to hear your guys' opinions on this one. I think he might have actually been able to kill it, but that's just me. Alas, he had to turn down the role to focus on being James Bond, and I'm kind of glad he did. Love him as James Bond. Number six, Emily Blunt. You and John are going to be Reed Richards and his wife Sue in the Fantastic Four movie, which I think would be a great idea. No, that is fan casting. We talked about John Krasinski already, but his wife, Emily Blunt, was actually almost cast as Natasha Romanoff, AKA the Black Widow. Apparently she was actually John Favreau's first choice for that role, but Emily was shooting Gulliver's Travel at the time, which you may not even remember. But it was a Fox production, and due to an agreement with the company, she had to say no. But she didn't seem to regret that decision saying that she thinks she would have missed out on a lot of other projects that she's done since then, and that's probably true. A lot of those other ones were actually really, really, really good, and I'm kind of glad that she did them. Number five, Zoe Deschanel. Three years before Evangeline Lilly got the role of the Wasp in the MCU, an old draft of the script actually revealed new girl actress Zoe Deschanel was who Joss Whedon had in mind for the role. Apparently this was actually a script for the Avengers, and Wasp was almost included since Scarlett Johansson, Black Widow, was possibly unavailable to shoot, which would have required a different female character to show up. But as fate has it, that was not the case, and Black Widow stuck, and Evangeline Lilly snagged the Wasp for Ant-Man three years later. Number four, Glenn Howerton. Glenn Howerton is best known as Dennis Reynolds on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but he was very nearly Star-Lord. Chris Pratt was obviously James Gunn's first choice for the character, but Glenn was a close second. Apparently during an Instagram Q&A, Gunn answered a question about who else auditioned for Star-Lord, and he said, quote, I would never share who auditioned and didn't get the role unless they shared it first. Many people know Howerton auditioned and was my second choice for the role. It makes me wonder, could you guys see that? I could kind of see it, but could you guys see it? Number three, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa is famous for many things, but he's also famous for playing Arthur Curry, Aquaman. And he was actually offered the role of Drax the Destroyer in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Now given his comedic chops and his massive size, I could actually kind of see this one. But now that we've had Dave Bautista as Drax, I can't really fully see anyone else doing it like at all. 
Speaking on it though, in 2014, Momoa said, quote, It's not that it's not a good role. It's just it wasn't the right thing. I was on Stargate Atlantis for four years playing a similar character called Ronan, who was an alien who didn't say much and grunted. I've been there and done that. He also said that Dave is perfect for the role, and I have to agree. Number two, Katherine Langford. 13 reasons why lead actress Katherine Langford was actually part of the cast of Avengers Endgame, with an announcement and everything, but in a secret role. It turned out that Langford was cast and even filmed scenes as an older version of Morgan Stark, like the I Love You 3000 girl, that one. The really cute little, you know what I'm talking about. She would have been seen after Tony gets the Infinity Gems and snaps his fingers, but if you've seen the movie, you know this scene ended up being cut. It was believed that the scene would have been too confusing and, in my opinion, it could have detracted from the emotional weight of the moment. Or maybe it would have made me ball my eyes out, I, I, I really don't know. Langford spoke on it saying, quote, I'd rather have had the experience of being in a really good film than be in a film for the sake of being in it if it doesn't work. And honestly, I kind of like that way of thinking. Yeah, I, at least I have the experience and honestly that I think was one of the coolest things that I've ever been able to do. So I'm just happy to have the memory. Number one, Jessica Chastain. This one's actually a bit more interesting as Jessica Chastain has actually been up for multiple roles in the MCU. The first was in Iron Man 3 as Maya Hansen. She was like the ex of Tony Stark and she played a very small role. So I'm kind of glad that she didn't get that one due to scheduling conflicts. Instead, it went to actress Rebecca Hall. But next up, was would have been the role of Christine Palmer for Doctor Strange. She's like the love interest of Doctor Strange. You know what I'm talking about. Now this one I think would have been very interesting to see. This was turned down by Jessica though, and we got Rachel McAdams instead. Chastain said that she would rather join the MCU as an actual hero, and honestly, yeah, I think she should too. She kind of deserves it. Not that Rachel McAdams doesn't, but you know what I'm saying. According to C. Robert Cargill, who's a screenwriter, Chastain said, quote, Hey, look, this project sounds awesome and I would love to do it, but I'm only going to get one shot at being in a Marvel film and becoming a Marvel character. And I trained in ballet and I really want to wear a cape. And that's all the time I have for you guys today. Stay safe and well informed out there. Toodles.